Welcome to another Q&A video. Um, today's question comes from Arno. I'll pull up Arno's question in a moment, but this relates back to a video tutorial I recently made about how to program your own loading animation in P5.js. So here's my loading animation that I made in that example, spinning, spinning, loading bar, loading bar, loading bar, loading bar, and ta-da! Um, so uh, there we go, everything's loaded, and you can see that this, this particular sketch was loading 10 sound files in the background. So um, uh, Arno uh, submits a particular piece of code, and this is Arno's loading animation, which I love. It's a nice, oh, it, it happened so fast, not enough to load, but you can see these nice oscillating rainbow colors, and then this thing pops up. Uh, I have Arno's uh, code right here. This is my code, my loading animation, which if you recall from that particular example, there is a function which uh, receives a file name, uh, loads that file and has a callback, and then counts if all of the songs are loaded. And once all of the songs are loaded, a Boolean variable is set to false, and then uh, a, re a green rectangle is then drawn in draw. So let's look at how the code is happening in Arno's sketch. So you can see there's a very similar thing going on. There's a load audio elements function. Ah, this is nice to see, a load image elements function. So there's both a callback for um, audio files and a callback for images. Uh, and then uh, you can see all of the songs are loaded, all of the images are loaded, um, and then there's some other stuff. And then uh, you can see what's being drawn based on whether loading is true or false. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, we see that this works, let's take a look at the questions now. So I'm gonna go over here uh, and find these questions. Okay, how to use the file in the draw function? I tried to assign a var to target a specific image in the array, but I didn't succeed. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I shouldn't look at the chat. Look at too distracted by your live chat. Okay, so let's take a look at the code again and, and see what's happening. So, um, so, so let's look at the images. The images being loaded are animi.png. So let's go. Uh, oops, I want to. Um, uh, Come here and find the code here. Let's look at this folder. Ah, so this is my, this actually comes from one of my other examples, which I plan to do a video tutorial about where this like stick figure example. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to display one of these images in the canvas, like number 10, for example. So in theory, um, uh, all of the images are in this images array. So in draw, uh, and I'm going to actually um, just comment this out. This is the nice uh, crazy thing that, and, and show you, let's just try image, images, index zero, 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 comma, zero. So let's just see if one of those images will appear. And we'll go back to uh, this one. Loading, 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 loading. Ah, error, cannot read property ELT of undefined. So what happened? Uh, so let's take a look. Let's see if we can figure this out. Is that images array? It's empty. Why is the images array empty? So something is wrong with this code. And guess what? We're going to do some live debugging on the air. Okay. So let's take a look. There is an array called images. It's empty. Uh, here. Ah, look at this. So this should be what's missing here is in this image loaded callback, right? the callback is automatically passed a reference to the p5.image object that was loaded. So this images.push is the correct call to add something to an array, but we just forgot to add that image itself. So now, if I run this again, we should see once everything is loaded, you can see there it is, the um, image, the image itself. Now, interestingly enough, the loading animation is still there. Let's see if we can look at the code and figure out um, why the loading animation is not there. It's still there. So where's that loading animation drawn? Huh. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if Arno is watching. <laughs> Let's, I don't see where that's drawn. Is it like a, I wonder if it's like a fancy CSS thing or something. So let's try, um, I have a feeling that let's do this. Background uh, 51. Let's run it again. 
Yes, okay, so that loading animation is actually some, maybe it's like a GIF or something else that's on the page, otherwise it's not actually part of the canvas. So you can see once it's loaded and I covered it up. By the way, let's just watch, let's, let's, since we're here, let's make the little animation, do its little animation thing. Uh, and so I'm gonna create a variable uh, called index and I'm gonna set that equal to zero and I'm gonna say images index and then I'm gonna say index equals index plus one and I'm also gonna add a little trick here. I'm gonna add the, add the modulus operator to say modulus the length of the array. Modulus is the remainder of division. So let's say that array was of length five. We would get zero, one, two, three, four. Then five modulus five would be zero. And six modulus five would be one, right? Because six divided by five is one remainder one. So that modulus makes it zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, except for the array is much longer. And we can run this now and everything is loaded and we can see there's the little animation of the person walking. Next, you can screen cap this and make this your animation in your program. Okay, I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay, so all right, so we fixed Arno's uh, first question, um, which is that uh, the images were just not added into the array. Um, okay, oh, Arno is watching and says, says, I use CSS to make the loading animation. Great, so that loading animation is there. Uh, hello, Arno, this is perfect. I'm so glad that you're watching because I'm answering your questions live. This is, this is great, this is what I always wanted to do. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, I guess that's what I, really what I wanted to do was, um, I don't know what I, uh, never mind. Let's get, let's, my, let's, let's not get into my childhood dreams that have all come and gone. <laughs> but I'm perfectly happy doing this. Okay, if you need to load several images, sounds that have different names, how do you preload them? Okay, so I think what this is asking, and Arno is in the chat, so um, you can let me know, but I believe what Arno is asking is, so let's look at this, so what if, what if you don't happen to have all of your images numbered like this? You know, you have an image cat, dog, turtle, nanatee, hedgehog, whatever, dot PNG, dot JPEG. So all the images have different names. So I don't have a great answer for this. Um, on the one hand, uh, and, and Arno in the chat, let me know if I'm answering this incorrectly, but uh, you can see how nicely it works to load all the images in a loop, but you can certainly do this. You know, on the one hand, the answer to this is, you know, mouse.png, just calling this a few times, you know, uh, a hedgehog and uh, a yellowtail, uh, you know, <laughs> swallow. I don't know. I'm thinking of bird. I was trying to give an interesting bird, cat bird, whatever. Um, so, uh, so this, on the one hand, you could just sort of line by line load your images. Uh, the, on the other hand, another possible thing you could do is just create an array of all the image file names. And this could be in your code, like this. And then that is something you could loop through and load them. And this, in fact, could come from a data file. So you could have a JSON file that has all your image names in it and you just load that JSON file and then load the images based on what's in that JSON file. And certainly you can read a directory of files if you just say load everything that's in this directory. Now that unfortunately, however, will require server-side programming because you can't do that from JavaScript in the browser. Now if you're in processing, which we're not, you, you know, processing has, is kind of a desktop application development, you could just, uh, you know, open a file, open a directory and list all the files. You could use something like node.js. I'd certainly be open at some point making a tutorial to show you how to do that. Um, okay, so that I think uh, are no, uh, hopefully that, okay, hopefully that answered that question. Okay, so we're done with question number two. And now we are, aha, as you will see in my sketch, I have two different functions to load the images and the sounds because I didn't succeed in mixing them together in the same one. Is there any way to load every sort of file, audio, image, font, et cetera, in the same function? This is a great question. So first of all, you know, from my point of view, you know, I'm writing a program and I gotta load a lot of images and I gotta load a lot of sounds. Big deal, I have two separate functions. It actually keeps my head clear. Things feel all right in the world. It looks nice, it's sort of tidy and organized. Fine, you know, because I don't have 50,000 different kinds of files. It's no big deal to have two separate things. I'm using images and sounds in a kind of different way. 
That said, it's an interesting exercise to sort of think about what might be possible. So I don't I honestly don't know uh, off the top of my head kind of where I'm going with this, but let's take a look at the code and see. Let's at least point out what's going on here. So what Arno is asking about, and let's see if I can remove some white space, make things a little bit smaller so we can kind of see. So you can see here, there is a lot of duplicate code. There's load audio elements, which is, and, and you know, I might say, I might take a little quibble, a tiny little quibble with the name of this function because technically this function is loading one thing. So it's not a function that you're, say, passing an array to or a list of things. So I might rename this load audio element. I might rename this load image element. But I think what, what the question that we're asking here is could I just write a function called load element and have it somehow know what to do, whether it's a, a sound or uh, a sound or uh, image file. And certainly we could, right? So one thing we could do is just add another argument. You know, I could, based on the file name, detect. I could do some string parsing and say, oh, if the file is named .mp3, then do this thing. If it's named .png, then do this other thing. But let's just say um, I'm going to add another argument to this function called type. And then I could do something like if type equals sound, then I would say load sound like this. Else if type equals image. And, and again, I could just read the file directory, the file name itself, uh, uh, image loaded. So now we have an interesting question, though. I still have, oh, and this would be load image, right? Um, so now the thing though is like, do I really need a sound loaded and an image loaded function? So what if I just, ha could I combine those? File loaded, file loaded. And what happens in these files? You can see that these two functions, image loaded and sound loaded, look mostly the same. So what if I took the interior of that code right up here uh, and wrote uh, a function called file loaded? And, and I'm just going to write in, in here, I'm just going to call it media because that media might be an image or it might be a sound. And then I'll do the same exact thing here. If type equals sound, then what do I want to do? I want to check the sound counter. You know, again, I could actually just have one counter. You know, I don't need a separate sound counter, actually. I could just have one counter. If counter equals total songs plus uh, total images, then l loading sound, I'm going to, you know, sound, and both of these things are true. I could just have, I could just have one loading, right? I'm just going to change this back to one loading, right? So now, uh, and not, so here, this comes out of here. So for everything that's loaded, I move, oops, I move up one. And now I'm just checking if the type is sound, then put the media in the sound array, else if the type is uh, image, then, and what is it, I assume the array was called images, images push the media. So you can see this is a kind of a nice, this is a nice combining of those two functions. I have now a generic load element that just takes a file name and a type. And so then, in this case, I don't need a separate load audio element. I don't need a separate load image element. And here, I can just say load element. Uh, and I can just say here sound as another argument. And here, I can say load element. And I can just say uh, image as an argument. And then here, I only have, uh, I don't need this anymore. Right, because this should say loading is false. So if if they've it's loading at the beginning, and if everything is loaded, then loading is false. And so now I just have a single thing to check, and I should be able to see that image. Let's see if I might have made some mistakes, but let's see if I got it right. Oh, oh wait, no, I'm on. Sorry, I'm on the uh, site. Okay. Ah, so what did I, counter is not defined, okay. So I added this idea of a single counter instead of two different counters, but I forgot, and I don't need these. Um, 
uh, uh, I've, uh, so I need to define that at the beginning. So let's see. Dun, dun, dun. And it worked. So you can see I was able to successfully take two separate functions, a function that loads sound and a function that loads images and combine that to a general load element function. Whether I've really made the code better or not, you know, up in the air, but as an exercise, you, hopefully that was helpful to you to see how that works. Okay, I believe I have now answered uh, all of these questions. Um, and so hopefully, Arno, this was useful to you. Hopefully it's useful to other people who have watched this video. Um, and again, if you're looking for the code for this particular example, look in this video's description, which will link to um, Arno's uh, GitHub repository. And then I will as well publish the revised code to the Coding Rainbow code, or maybe Arno will up use my revised code up in that GitHub, who knows? The code, wherever it is, it'll be in the video's description because I'll figure it out later. Okay, thanks for watching and I will see you in another Q&A video. Ask your questions someday, please. Thanks, bye. <laughs>